Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our online video Wednesday night sermon series, whatever you want to call this thing. Thanks for tuning into this video. Um, I want to start out with saying something first. We miss you guys. We cannot wait until the day comes that we all get to get together, not in Zoom meetings, but physically get together and be with one another. It's Oh, it's going to be a great day. Whether it might be like a youth event or like a Wednesday night service, youth camp, I don't know. It's going to be a good day, whatever day that is. So if you read the description, this video is talking about how masks are meant to help. Masks are meant to help. And a lot of people are wearing masks to help them during this time of COVID-19, right? If you don't like them. I don't like, I don't love mine. It's not the most comfortable thing. Some people got some real fancy ones. They've gone all out and I'm like, pulled it out of my garage. That's cool, y'all. It works. No one's going to tell me nothing when I walk up in the store with this one on because it's a mask. But masks are a protective thing, whether it be COVID-19, whether there be gas in the air or whether you're in a, a workshop and there's sawdust. That's why I have this. When I'm making cuts on wood, I'm not like breathing in sawdust. You ever been around that? Like a bunch of sawdust, but people cutting wood, you go home, you blow your nose, and it's like sawdust. <laughs> and so, you know, it's masks are meant to be a protective thing. The Bible also talks about something that's protective. So if you will grab your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 20 so ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 20 you can pause your video now okay great you pause your video we're back together let's keep going so we're going to be talking in this video about the armor of god and within ephesians chapter 6 the the armor of god the pieces of it are all listed in verses um 14 through 17 but there's four verses before that and three verses after that that are all also talking about the armor of God. So why would we only read those verses? Why wouldn't we read everything that talks about it and what Paul's talking about in, in, in his writing to the Ephesians? And so let's read Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 20. And it says, it says this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may, may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an, I am an ambassador in change that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. You know, I love my study Bible. Um, I know I've talked and I always talk about having a good study Bible and I feel like it's really important if you really want to be able to dive into God's word and have a little bit more understanding maybe of some of the words or some of the passages or this and that study good study Bible is important I love mine um, you know it might be a little harder to see but like that's the scripture and then this is all notes down here about this now the bulk of these notes um, are all about the armor of God. Um, some notes are bigger than others. Some verses don't even have a note because it's like, hey, it's kind of self-explanatory. Jesus wept. He wept. Um, 
I don't need a long paragraph explaining what wept means, but it's really good for helping just kind of have a, a, a better understanding. And as I was reading through this and, and, and reading through this portion, um, my study Bible has it broken, this passage broken up into three different sections, verses 10 through 13, 14 through 17, and 18 through 20. And it almost has it as like, there's three different kind of trains of thought um, that Paul's going through as he writes this. Uh, not necessarily trains of thought because it's all about the same thought, but he's talking about different pieces um, of the armor of God. And so let's talk about the first section. It's verses 10 through 13, and it titles it, titles it as the Lord's strength. See, I think it was important how Paul started out in verse 10 talking about the armor of God. I think he was very intentional and he meant to start out with this by saying, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. You see, our strength and ability to stand up against Satan do not come from how trained we are with the armor of God. How well we can hold up our shield of faith, how we can slash or memorize our sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Those are great. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit and, and being trained in those things and having those things as pieces of the armor. But our ability to withstand Satan and to be victorious is not because of us. Our strength cannot do it. Your strength alone is not going to help you stand up against Satan. It is by God's strength. It is um, by the Lord's strength and in his might that we will be able to stand up against Satan. And I think that's why I think it was important that Paul started out with this by saying, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. To kind of remind the church, hey guys, all of what I'm about to talk about is good stuff. But we must be dependent upon God to pull us through this. We must be dependent upon him to be able to have the strength to make it through. Because in verse 12, it talks about everything that we're up against. It talks about um, rulers, authorities, cosmic powers, spiritual forces, and that's a lot. And so to be able to withstand all of that, we've got to have God's strength. We, our strength cannot come from us, but it must come from the Lord. In Colossians 2.15, which this is why I love a good study Bible, because it makes this cross-reference, cross Jesus' death. And this is talking about kind of in verse 12, um, about everything that we're up against. This is just a, a good little nugget reminder in there. That Jesus' death on the cross disarmed all of the rulers and authorities and he put them to shame. Because of Jesus' death on the cross, they don't have the power to defeat the Lord. They can't, they can't beat him. He's already de defeated him. They're attacking us. But Jesus will always have the upper hand. The Lord's going to always, always have more strength and more might than the enemy and in verse 13 it says to stand firm and that we need to have the whole armor of god and that's when paul begins to list the pieces of the armor of god so let's look at that set our second section i like what it's titled standing firm so in verses 14 through 17 uh the pieces are listed and we have the belt of truth right click it on gotta know the truth you got to know what's right. You got to know deep down and, and know what the truth of, of where life comes from. The breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. The shoes of the gospel of peace. I always like to think of this as we're ready to go. Because we have, it doesn't matter what's next. We have God, the, the peace that we get gained from the gospel. Man, y'all, we're ready. Whatever can come against us, whatever might try to uh, put us into fear and make us run away, we're ready. We're ready to go. I kicked a box underneath my desk. The shield of faith. And uh, this helps, you know, kind of uh, uh, bring it into the, the, the day, the time, whenever this was written. It says, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. 
I always kind of read that and been like, all right, like, yeah, those flaming arrows just like dink off. But, you know, because I'm thinking of like a metal shield. But back then, they didn't have metal shields. It was mostly, a lot of the times, it was wooden shields. So a flaming dart, that's not only is it going to, it might pierce the, the shield and it might not hit the guy, but it's going to catch that shield on fire. So homie's going to have to drop his shield, right? And so the shield of faith is able to extinguish all the flaming darts. You ever seen fire, a flaming dart shot at a piece of wood, then the wood just, it just put it out? Never seen it. Never really seen wood put fire out. So I'm going to say the shield of faith is a pretty strong piece there. Got the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. But we have to have each piece to be able to stand firm. Each piece must be worn for us to be able to be fully prepared in battle. If we're missing our breastplate, if we're missing our helmet, if we're missing our shield, if we're missing our shoes, you like my Crocs? If we're missing our shoes, it's going to hinder us in battle. And it could lead to defeat. And we don't want to be defeated. We want to be victorious. So we must put each and every one of those on. And we must be trained in those. And I talked earlier about it doesn't matter how much you're trained. We have to be dependent upon God. And so, but we have to be trained in it though. We can't, not all of our strength can rely on what we're capable of doing, but we have to be prepared to do it. We have to know God's word, right? We have to know the truth. We must live righteous lives. We must be, have peace that comes from the gospel. It means knowing the gospel and understanding that. How big is your faith? Do you know what your salvation means? There are all things that we have to be trained in so we're prepared to use it in battle. And then the third section, verses 18 through 20, is constant prayer. Be in constant prayer. Verse 17, when you're reading it, if you're reading it in your Bible, it doesn't end in a period. It ends in a comma and it goes right on into verse 18. Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Prayer is our most powerful resource. Prayer is your most powerful resource when it comes to defeating the evil one, to defeating the devil. And so how has your prayer life been? How is your prayer life? Is it good? Great. Does it need work or is it non-existent? So how can you challenge yourself in your prayer life? How can you challenge yourself? Is it going to, might that be adding time? Man, if your prayer life is good and you are spending time talking to God and listening to God, great. How do you challenge yourself? Add some time to it. Add time. Say, you know what? I've been really good. I'm going to add 10 minutes. I'm going to add 30 minutes and I'm going to really spend time in prayer. Might that mean praying more often? If it needs a little work, yeah, just pray more often. Think about it. Praying daily, praying throughout the day, constantly talking to God. Or if your prayer life's non-existent, give five minutes a day to actually pray. Masks are meant to help, just like the armor of God is meant to help us. It's not meant to hold us down or hold us back. It's meant to help us stand firm because the enemy and spiritual warfare are a real thing. It's a real thing and we need to have the armor of God to be able to stand firm and we must be dependent upon his strength. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to still share your word. I just pray that uh, you pierce our hearts uh, through this video. I just ask that you challenge us in our prayer lives, Lord. Challenge us in talking to you. May your spirit remind us daily that we need to spend time with you, Lord, through prayer, through listening. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, we love y'all, and we will catch you later.